Hi everybody, how are you doing today? Hope that you're great. Um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 12 onwards where Christ um, is manifest in a vision to John and it's really quite a magnificent image of him um, glowing, of him um, in a long garment. He has um, his chest area uh, covered, um, which resembles the um, the dress, the attire of um, a high a high priest, um, as instructions given to um, Moses, where um, the high priest had a, a, a girdle and an ephod in the chest area, and basically um, everything about this image really. It points to Christ really being the temple of God because okay he's he, he's dressed in this golden girdle but his hair resembles um, that of a lamb so it reminds us of how um, um, sheep were slaughtered and how in fact of course he offered himself as a sacrifice um, and the the utensils his feet were like a, a copper and that reminds us of the uh, utensils that were used in um, the temple. Um, and his eyes were like a fiery flame. That reminds us of uh, maybe burnt sacrifices and also um, of um, um, lampstands being uh, kept burning in, in the temple arrangement. So um, in all these different ways, this image of Christ points to him as um, the reality uh, that the temple for, foreshadowed. And I left some scriptures um, in the description of my last video and they really outline how Christ was high priest in the manner of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was um, um, a high priest. He had no line of uh, genealogy. There was no trace um, of his history uh, before or after. And, and Christ is similar because uh, the priesthood was to be from amongst the tribe of Levi. Christ was not of that tribe. We know he was from the tribe of Judah. So he couldn't trace a priestly um, a lineage prior to him. And certainly there was none after him. So in that way, um, and um, in his role as king, Christ was very much... Um, a high priest in the manner of Melchizedek, as as um, he was prophesied to be. Um, but again, um, going back to this image of Christ um, with his hair as wool, um, there are a number of scriptures that talk about him um, as a, the lamb that was slaughtered. Um, I've noted. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19 where it speaks of the precious blood of a spotless and unblemished, unblemished lamb. Also um, John chapter 1 and verse 36 where it speaks of the lamb of God. And also Revelation chapter 5 verses 6 and 12 um, where it speaks of the lamb as though it had been slaughtered. And also Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. Uh, let me just take a quick look at that one. I think that's where the lamb battles. Um, that's Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. These will battle with the lamb, but because he is Lord of lords and King of kings, the lamb will conquer them. Yeah, so, um, as I've said in my previous video, there are people... Who say, well, you know, look, this means Christ was a black man and he's got an afro and whatnot. But maybe he did, you know, maybe he had, an, he had an afro. But I don't really feel this is the importance of this image. Um, nowhere else, in, nowhere in scripture does it describe what Christ looked like. Um, because we all, whatever race we are, we want to relate to Christ. Um, and... We relate to Christ through our, our heart and our mind inclination being um, in sync with his. It's not, it's, it's not to do with our outward appearance. 
and scripture does tell us this is the way that Father sees us and of course uh, Christ does too um, that girdle it, it, it covers the chest area where the heart is and um, Christ judges um, in righteousness and with love and that's the importance of, of, of that area being um, highlighted um, and also when I thought of Christ's hair being like um, wool it reminded me the importance of the hair of a Nazarite when um, uh, you took a vow of Nazarite ship or you were um, I don't know you were assigned either you, you chose voluntarily or you were assigned um, to, to from birth to be a Nazarite then um, you were not to cut your hair we know the famous example of um, Samson and what happened um, uh, when he lost his hair he lost all his strength and um, there's a scripture let me just find that scripture I think it's in Judges Judges chapter alright wait one moment one moment let me pause a second sorry about that I did have it in the right um, chapter I just couldn't find the verse that's Judges chapter 16 and verse 17 it says, finally he disclosed to her all his heart and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head because I am a Nazarite of God from my mother's belly. If I did get shaved, my power also would certainly depart from me and I should indeed grow weak and become like all other men. So we know the account that Samson lost his hair um, and he was uh, blinded and chained and bound and whatnot, but his hair had grown back and then he regained his strength one last time and broke down the temple of the um, Philistines and really we can equate this to um, Christ's greatest strength and his greatest conquest was when he offered himself as that lamb that was um, it wasn't easy for him. Um, there are accounts in scripture where he, he prayed and he, um, he sweated blood. And an angel came and strengthened him. Um, and then he still, had to, he still went back and prayed. Because this, this task was so hard for him, so tough for him. But he did find that inner strength. Eventually he found that inner strength. And um, and through offering himself as that unblemished and spotless lamb, he really threw down and, and broke up the works of the devil, um, just as Samson threw, uh, throwing down that temple. Um, it was his greatest victory, and he, and he, and he destroyed many in his, with his death than he did in his lifetime. But... Um, yeah, Christ, um, through offering um, himself as a as a unblemished and spotless lamb, he released us from our sins and gave us the opportunity of everlasting life again. Because, as we know, Adam, a perfect man under test, he sided with Satan. Whereas Christ, no matter what the devil threw at him, he stayed loyal to Father and Father's will, no matter how hard it was for him. And he proved that if Father granted us back perfect life, that, um, you know, we would remain loyal. Because Satan the devil has, has um, claimed, we can see through the book of Job, that he can turn any human away from Father. And this is what he's done through all the religions of the world. I believe through the Trinity and through Islam and through Hinduism and all, you know, you name it. All these religions of the world, Watchtower included, prove Satan the devil right. He's turned all of these people, billions of people, away from the true and acceptable way of worship to Father. And again, that's why it's, I feel it's so important 
um, as ex-Jehovah Witnesses and Jehovah Witnesses to understand um, the error of this uh, Trinity teaching because by adopting it the Satan succeeds and by standing firm against this Trinity doctrine then um, we as scripture says are making our father's heart rejoice but yeah I digress a little bit there going back to this image of Christ and his hair as a white wool I really feel um, it's it's about his greatest strength that he brought victory um, for us, victory over sin and victory over death. Um, but um, it, it wasn't easy for him. There's a scripture, I think, Luke chapter 22. It's Luke chapter 22 and verses 42 to 44. Luke 22, verses 42 to 44, and it says there, But getting into an agony, he continued praying more and more earnestly, and his sweat became as drops of blood falling to the ground. So, um, yeah, I mean, that just um, happened after he had the appearance of an angel come and strengthen him. And it just shows that he still found it really hard. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7. It says there, In the days of his flesh, um, offered up supplications and also petitions to the one who was able to save him out of death, with strong outcries and tears. And he was favourably heard for his godly fear. So Christ's... Um, offered up supplication with tears um, on this occasion because he found it so hard to go through with um, sacrificing himself as this lamb and it was the sole purpose of him coming to earth um, he spoke to Nicodemus uh, at the start of his ministry and, and, and said he's got to die but now that the moment was upon him I mean it was hard for him um, he really had to find that inner strength to be this lamb. And, and that's what this image is telling us, that just as Samson's hair was his strength, Christ offering himself as this lamb was his strength. He's brought a future back for the whole of mankind, from Abel till now. Billions of people um, have the possibility of life. Because Christ um, conquered and he had this, this strength. The power of what he done as well, that, that, that's so strong that he could redeem all of mankind. And that's what th this, this head of wool is about. You know, I, don't, I just don't believe he's trying to tell us that he, 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 was, he was a black man when he was off the flesh. What he's telling us is that he's brought life back for all of the human race, no matter no matter what colour. Yeah, and that, that is strong and that is powerful. Anyway, um I think I'll leave it at that for now. Um maybe if actually maybe a few more scriptures. Um comparing Samson to Christ. They both had an angelic announcement of their birth. You can read that at Judges chapter 13 and verse 13 about Samson. Um, they both had a lion come roaring um, towards them. Um, Samson ripped the lion's mouth apart. You can read that at Judges chapter 14 and verses 5 and 6. And we know that Christ, after he was baptised, he went to the wilderness. And Satan came like a ro roaring lion trying to twist scriptures and devour him in that sense. First Peter 5, 8 speaks of Satan walking about like a roaring lion trying to devour. And Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, that's the account where Christ uh, did go out into the wilderness after he was baptised. Um, both were betrayed by a prospective bride. We know Delilah betrayed. Um, at Judges chapter 16, verses 4 and 5, um, and we can read of Judas at Luke chapter 22, 
verses 4 to 6. They were both tortured and mocked. Judges chapter 16, verses 21 and 25. We know, of course, of Christ. You can read that at John chapter 19, verses 1 to 5, as well as other gospel accounts. Um, Samson lost his strength when he lost his hair. Judges chapter 16 and verse 19. But Christ relinquished his power. That is a difference. He willingly gave up his um, strength. He gave up his... Because he could have called for uh, uh, legions of angels, he says, to, to spare him. But he willingly gave up um, his life. Um, Matthew chapter 26, verse 53, I've got written down here. I hope that makes sense. Um... And Samson, in his death, when he found his strength, um, he defeated the whole temple of the Philistines and, uh, and it broke into pieces. And this is what Christ done when he offered his life as a sacrificial lamb. Scripture describes that he broke up um, the works of the devil. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 the latter part of that and also um, John chapter 16 verse 33 let me just check 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 and the latter part says for this purpose the son of God was made manifest namely to break up the works of the devil and then 16, verse 33. John chapter 16 and verse 33 says, I have said these things to you. Oh yeah, Christ says, in the world you are having tribulation, but take courage, I have conquered the world. So Christ's death was his uh, greatest conquest, just as Samson, his death was his greatest conquest. So, yeah, um, I'm going to leave it at that for now. And if I think of any more scriptures, then I will leave them in the description below. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye for now.